The Russian opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, has died in prison, sparking outrage and suspicion over his politically charged 19-year sentence. Now, Navalny was a vocal critic of Putin. He was moved to a harsh Arctic prison last year, seen to be the harshest prison in all of Russia and Siberia, actually. His sudden death after falling ill during a walk raises many questions about his treatment and the circumstances surrounding his death. Well, joining me now to discuss this is uh, the foreign affairs commentator Mary Dajewski is with me, as is the former military uh, uh, intelligence officer Philip Ingram. Thank you both very much indeed for joining me. Mary, I can start with you first. This is this strikes me. You know much more about this than I do, but I mean, uh, Navalny's wife Yulia was at the Munich Security Conference today. It seems like an awfully big coincidence that Navalny drops dead today of all days. What do you make of this, Mary? Well, I think there are there are a lot of days which could be seen as being sort of um, symbolic in a way um, for um, Navalny's death. Um, and each one of them could be seen as making a political point. Um, we've had people on social media um, since the announcement as saying, um, not by chance that this came after Tucker Carlson's interview with Putin. Um, he, he had to wait until then to do the deed. Um, we've had other people saying that um, there was, as it were, a conspiracy inside the prison and that it was um, the prison guards that did it. Um, I, you know, I simply don't know. And what I think you can see from, from, from the report so far is that the, the Russian officials were very, very concerned to get the news out in an official way, um, because they obviously realized that there was going to be a lot of um, speculation and rumor, and um, they put their version of it out first. Um, but of course, that hasn't um, prevented all the speculation. Yeah. The Munich Security Conference um, connection I find that um, slightly less plausible, even though um, Navalny's wife um, was there, because, um, yes, it's a big event in the security calendar. Um, you can see it. It's also where, um, memorably, um, Putin made um, the speech where he attacked NATO expansion in, I think, um, 2007. Um, but it doesn't seem to me to be a really big event in the international calendar Interesting. that would really um, be a, a bit be a symbolic connection for this particular um, this particular really I mean very sad even tragic event. Mm. Philip, what do you make of this? Well, I find it fascinating. You know, the last um, Russian presidential election back in 2018, exactly 10 days beforehand was when Sergei Skripal was poisoned in Salisbury. Um, Vladimir Putin's got a, a history of making uh, big statements to send messages to people uh, just before his election. And we're exactly one month before uh, Vladimir Putin's next presidential election and his main opposition leader dropped dead in prison. Now, Navalny is not a particularly well man after um, being poisoned with Novichok in 2020. Um, but there was always uh, pressure on um, him to be silenced even more. And since his move to uh, the the prison where he's he's died in, he had put some statements out across social media that I think embarrassed Putin. So I see this as probable um, uh, assassination, but there you know, there isn't enough information at the moment. But it's sending a clear message to anyone in the opposition that opposition will not be tolerated. Let's talk and about the Munich security. The Munich Security Conference is quite an important, a very important international security conference. Yeah. So I wouldn't completely write off the link between Navalny's wife talking at that and uh, and this happening today. Mary, just briefly, what's the reaction going to be in Russia? How uh, free are people going to be to express their opinion on this? Well, I think there's going to be very little freedom to express an opinion, um, but I think those who are um, relatively um, uh, less concerned about that are going to be on um, sections of social media. But I think there will be a lot of people inside Russia who were part of Navalny's network of campaigners and activists, particularly against grassroots corruption, 
who are going to they're going to be mourning quite quietly um but they'll also still be there to bide their time there'll be a lot of clamor in the west but i think there will be um the the the, the will be um people who were part of Navalny's team all over Russia, who will be um, distressed, but in a way also resigned at this news, but in a way geared up also to revive those activities once the circumstances that are currently stopping them maybe change. Mary Dujewski and Philip Ingram, thank you both very, very much indeed. Fascinating to hear from you both with your great expertise on this issue.